today I wanted to talk a little bit about like one of the about the Bankston method and of course if you want to learn the Bankston method you need to learn it from him he's got audio trainings he's got classes he's got all sorts of things so these are my squirrely little um, workarounds or ways that I've I've learned how to teach it because when you start learning the Bankston method there's like a multitude of places that people get stuck and I've been teaching it for about 12 years now to my private clients and um, I can get almost anybody unstuck from you know it's like every step of the way so the, the little piece of teaching I'd like to do today is um, is about why a spinning meditation and what is the imagination and all that and I'm gonna try to do it in like 10 minutes okay so I have my notes here all right um, so in a few, I'm going to be teaching for a few minutes, and if you're here for healing, just just listen to this teaching, okay? It'll help us form a group resonance if we're all kind of thinking about similar thoughts. And then um, if you're watching this on YouTube, just the teaching portion goes on to, on to YouTube. The actual distance healing where I do a guided visualization that uses some of the principles that I'm, I'm going to be teaching now. Um, is reserved for uh, the private Facebook group, which anybody can join, so it's only semi-private. It's just that you have to uh, do a little electronic deed to, to get in. And then, um, yeah. All right, so one of the big things people say is like, what's this guided visualization? Like, I have cancer. Like, it's a real tumor thing that's growing. It's real physical. And isn't imagination just positive thinking? And I would say that imagination can be positive, it can be negative, and can, can be a billion different things. But there, the imagination is real. And that's kind of where I want to go with this. Is that this? sometimes we discount our imagination because we think, oh, that's not real, or that's not physical, and I need a physical answer to a physical problem. And I would say that the imagination is a portal to... Um, an information field that um, that is beyond our conscious thought, beyond positive thinking, is a more what I would term spiritual. Imagination is still in the psychic realm because we're psychic, using our mind to create an, a mental picture. Um, and I think the information field that um, that helps us heal from minor things and major things. Um, is not psychic. It's um, it's beyond psychic. It's more subtle than psychic. It's a higher frequency than cycling. It's psychic. It's non-dual, so it isn't any of those things. It's it's kind of like a nothing and everything kind of thing. So um, let's but let's go back a notch and work with the imagination. What is real about the imagination? So if I told you to really, really, really think of a pink elephant. And you thought of a pink elephant, you really did the imagination of a pink elephant, okay? And now what is a pink, I, I picked a pink elephant because I didn't want you to get all tied up with the meaning. I wanted some kind of random, almost frivolous image. Um, and if you thought of a pink elephant, you have certain associations with pink elephants, like you might have had a plastic pink elephant, you might have had a cartoon, of, you know, a flat pink elephant, you might have had a little baby pink elephant and a mommy pink elephant, and then suddenly you have a herd of pink elephants, you know, it could have just like exploded into a pink elephant fantasy. Um, so these, these mental pictures are, um, are being generated by, you would say, your unconscious, and I would say there's a, a, an unconscious that's lower and there's a superconscious that's higher. So how do we invoke mental pictures or imaginations of higher impulses? Um, you do that by intention. So if you have mental pictures of positive things that you want, that you aspire to, that you're trying to attune with, 
that's very different than groveling in self-defeating thoughts and imaginations of gloom and doom and things like that. So in your better moments, not all the time, but when you're emotionally calm, you can actually will yourself to think more positive thoughts. So, um, if I asked you to think of a pink elephant, a pink elephant to me is not positive or negative. It's just kind of neutral. If I asked you to think of an, a picture, an egg, you might have associations with eggs, but it's not, it's not really gr gloom and doom and it's not really, you know, happy happiness. Um, so now I want to go through a little exercise where you imagine you're healing. Good morning, Dorothy. Good morning, Victor. Um, so imagine that you have a picture of healing. If you're here for someone else that you care about, imagine their healing. If you're here for healing for yourself, imagine your own healing. And create a mental picture, the same way you thought of a pink elephant. Think of a mental picture of what it would look like if you were completely healed. Or if, or if your friend was, or your loved one was completely healed. And notice if it's easy or hard to do that. If it's easy, just just stay with that and listen to me. If it's hard, ask that any barriers to you being able to see this image be removed. Because you don't have to do anything to think, right? It's really not any harder than thinking of a pink elephant or an egg. Ask for an image of the complete healing to come in. And it, it should be something that you can take a picture of, not a feeling. It shouldn't just you being, be really happy, like a clean PET scan or, you know, the veterinarian super surprised or um, something like that. It's nice if it's in the here and now, not like, okay, I'm celebrating being alive 50 years from now. Okay, so think of that mental image. And notice that if you're here, you probably care a lot about this. You wouldn't spend, you know, take aside a half hour of your day to do this if there, it wasn't really, really, really important. So unlike the pink elephant image, this image of your healing might have qualities that are harder to hang on to. All right. And so I'd like you just to, once you get the image, kind of like take a snapshot of it and put it in an envelope, an imaginary envelope, so that you've got it. Because you might notice that if you're looking at it, little shadows of doubt come in, shadows of, oh, that might be too hard, or why should I even want this? Like all these these things interfere with just having a clear image of, of, yeah, I would love to be completely healed, or I'd love to have my friend or my cat or my dog completely healed. All right. So you put it in an imaginary envelope, okay? And then you know that it's in there and it's not moving. It's not like being corrupted by by your lack of alignment with it. And usually things that we care really deeply about, we aren't in alignment with. And that's okay, because that's the process of life, is to become in alignment with it. But often, we can just get there briefly. Okay, so do that. Now, let's um, think of something almost trivial that you would also like. So you'd like the healing, the cancer being cured, but you'd also like maybe a messy junk drawer cleaned out. So there's like tape and scissors and batteries and dust and little parts to appliances that you don't know what they go to and tape and then more tape because you had to buy more because you couldn't find it. And you know, there's this really messy junk drawer. And now imagine that this, this drawer is completely organized and you can find everything and you don't have too many, th you don't have 12 pairs of scissors you just have the number that you think is the right number, and there you go. All right. You don't have 5,000 markers. You have the ones you want. Okay, good. Now put that picture in the envelope. So now in the envelope you have something that's that you want that you don't have, but you also have something that, that is really just taking the time to do it, right? Just to organize a drawer. And then you have the cancer being cured or the healing, and that might seem more impossible or, or difficult, but they're in the same envelope. So now in this envelope, you don't, you're holding this envelope, and if you're thinking at some level this envelope is like a magical thing that helps manifest what's inside it, you don't know if it's working on the junk drawer or the healing. Okay, and now let's put one more image in, 
And this, let's do an image of a project that you have at work around the home that might take several days. It's a little bit harder than cleaning it than 10 minutes with the junk drawer, or with my junk drawer, it takes a whole hour <laughs> if you ignore it long enough. Um, anyway, um, but this one takes like days or weeks, but not years, and it's not impossible. You just maybe you've been procrastinating and you really want to do it because it's important. There you go. Now put the image of that complete and done inside the envelope. Okay, good. So now this envelope has three things in it something almost trivial, something that takes a little bit of effort that has been a challenge and something that feels harder in some ways. You know, we have these judgments. There's this, I don't know if it's a Bible thing or not, that, you know, in God's eyes, it doesn't matter if it's a mountain or a grain of rice or something like that. You know, it's the same level of difficulty. Because when you're out of duality, it, duality is what, this exchange is what makes certain things hard and certain things easy. But, um, where we're going to put this is, it's, it is all the same. Okay, good. So now I'd like you to add, pretend like you had like a week in the woods or something, and all you did was meditate on your goals and dreams. And now pretend like that envelope now has about 500 pictures of things that you want that you don't have. Trivial things, in between things, pie in the sky things, things that you really care about. The envelope just got fat. And just pretend that you've done the exercise. And the reason I said 500 rather than 20 or 50 is not very many people are going to sit down and think of 500 things they want. So it's just a lot, and then it's even more. Okay? So, and this is a way to detach from, from making the images so important. Because it's, it's about paradox. They're super important, and they're not important at all. All right, so now I'd like you to, you got this big, thick envelope. Um, we're not going to put it in a drawer. We're not going to put it in a bag or a purse. We're going to put it in a different dimension, and we're going to use speed to do that. So I'd like you to pretend, like you could pretend that a car floats, really can't float. Envelopes really can't float, but we can pretend they can. So pretend like the envelope can float, and now pretend like the envelope spins so fast that it disappears. But it's still there. It might You might hear a whirling, or it might be a little bit of a blur. Just a faint little way that you know that that envelope is spinning just the way you want it to. Okay? All right, great. And as we did this, I felt the energy of the group shift. So the spinning alone is important, according to me. All right? I don't know if it's important according to Bankston. But in my, as a vibrational healer, I really know how to work with vibration. And, um and what it is, what it is, and all that. So just spin in your imagination. If I had you um, spinning your pink elephant, it would look like a pink blob, right? So it doesn't look like an envelope anymore. It just looks like a, like a field almost. It's spinning so fast. And it's like it goes into a different dimension. It's there, and it's not. Okay, good. Now, we're going to do the guided visualization. And um, when I talk about spinning, I want you to imagine that your little envelope is doing the spinning, okay? And we can make friends with, there's so much more that we can go into all this. Um, and I do with my private clients. Um, you know, we really tailor make it their, their journey for them. So it's their creative process. There's nothing canned about it. There's nothing wrote about it. There's nothing um, dead about it. It actually becomes this living, breathing, um, not even a tool, I would almost call it a friend that that helps them with their healing. Okay, so if you're watching on YouTube, please join us on Facebook. If you're here on Facebook, have your envelope spinning and notice where you want to put it. You want to put it behind your head, in front of you. And now close your eyes.